Welcome to the Crypto's Key Conversation. We're gonna quickly jump into CoinGecko here. Currently sitting at a $1.98 trillion market cap, currently up 2.5%. Looking at the top 10 here, Bitcoin sitting at 41,610. Ethereum sitting at 3,023. Tether's Tether. Binance Coin sitting at 417. Cardano sitting at $1.13. Solana sitting at 114. XRP sitting at 66 cents. Polkadot sitting at $21. And then uh, Terra sitting at 55. So as you can see, coming down here, there's so much gr more green in the market. Coming over here, let's look at the uh, top gainers. Gal is at 33%, Theta Fuel 18, Sandbox 13. I mean, got some double digit gainers here. Coming over here to the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index, <clears throat> we're in that 33 range now. So we're out of the extreme fear. Now we're back in the fear range. And we've been kind of um, gravitating towards this lower range of the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index for some time now, for many reasons that we talked about in all of our pre previous videos. The biggest thing being just the uncertainty within the market when it comes to Jerome Powell and the Fed, inflation, uh, tapering and interest rate hikes, and just it's a lot of FUD that's been coming out with a lot of articles and stuff. So uh, coming over here, it's not just our markets that's been affected, it's been the regular stock market. And as you can see for today, we're seeing some green and some positives within both markets. S&P 500's up half a percent, NASDAQ's up 1.58%. But if we come over here to crypto, as we just saw from the coin gecko we have a lot of positivity i mean bitcoin is sitting at almost 42,000 ethereum's at 3,000 i mean we've been in a low range for for some time now so to see this positivity is is truly light at the end of the tunnel now is it a bull trap you know are are we kind of getting set up to to be you know to have some more liquidations when it comes to people going long uh, you know, is Bitcoin going to hold and the crypto market going to hold strong? You know, are we ready to reverse this bear trend we've been in and continue to go on our bull cycle? Uh, who knows? So we're going to, uh, you know, see what the next few days have and the next few weeks has going on. And we'll continue to cover uh, what's going on in the markets. But we're going to come over here and start with this uh, crypto regulation uh, article th through Yahoo Finance. It says crypto regulation is coming, just not this year, says Pierce. So obviously we talked a lot about how... SEC, Gary Gensler, and the government's coming after, you know, platforms, you know, exchanges in particular, and making sure that they're compliant with investor protection. So they're trying to ramp up their, uh, you know, how they regulate, unofficially regulate, but pretty much how they um, keep tabs on these exchanges, making sure that they're doing right by the, you know, U.S. investors. Coming over here, Crypto Eddie had uh, posted a tweet with a quick little snippet of Hester Pierce being interviewed by the Yahoo Finance. So we're going to take a listen in and see what they have to say. So then, Commissioner Pierce, uh, are there any uh, regulations or rules that the crypto community can expect this year from the SEC, whether it's, you know, exchange regis registration or otherwise, or should we expect a ramp up in enforcement activity? I think that that's the discouraging piece of it, is that we're leading a lot of these charges through enforcement instead of taking the approach of using our rule book, our existing rule book, and our existing statutory authority, which tells us that we can make adjustments to the rules to accommodate new, new things and different things. So we should be working on creating that kind of a framework that works, but I just don't see it on the horizon based on what's in the regulatory agenda. And that, that leads me to fear that a lot of this work is going to be done through enforcement, which is not the right way to go about writing rules. You want to do it in a transparent way that involves all of the affected people, whether it's the, the people running the platforms or the people um, trading on the platforms. You want everyone to be able to have a say in how those rules look. So absolutely. And obviously Hester Pierce is, is one of the advocates of the space. So we've talked about in previous videos, you know, what's going on with the Ripple versus SEC and then how uh, Coinbase and Brian Armstrong wanted to have their Coinbase Lend product, but they got slapped in the face, you know, with the SEC kind of dropping the hammer on them saying, hey, we're going to come after you if you if you do this. So they ended up, you know, kind of cowering down and, and not proceeding on with that. And uh, Johnny Deaton, uh, as we covered in our latest video, just before this one, Johnny Deaton was talking about how he advised Brian Armstrong and, Co and Coinbase to have the, um, to pretty much, I think it was like an amicus brief or something going against the SEC to pretty much, you know, defend, you know, their case in, in regards of, you know, why they should be able to have their Lend product. But the point is, it's like with this narrative and this push to, you know, come after the platforms and exchanges to make sure that they're regulatory compliant, but as Hester Pierce said, you know, doing it through enforcement isn't the right way. But whether, you know, we think it's the right way or not, it's happening. And if you think that, you know, 
uh, you know, when it comes to the SC versus Ripple, if you think they're just coming after Ripple and, and, and XRP, that's not the case. They're tr they came after this big player to set precedent and set a standard and foundation for themselves to have more power to overregulate and overstep when it comes to our space. So they're coming after everybody. And it's quite evident with, you know, Hester Pierce talking on this Yahoo Finance and all the articles we've been covering in our past videos. So when it comes to the platforms and the on and off ramps we utilize, if they're not, you know, so-called, uh, compliant with you know investor protection in 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 the views of the uh, sec it's going to be very problematic so um i know we as a community got to make sure we stay up to date we contact our representatives and make sure that you know when it comes to the, you know these government bodies regulating our space we got to make sure that they do it fairly and as she says you know have an open line of communication make sure things are transparent so they're fair and just for the entire space so you don't hinder and stifle that innovation in worst case scenario kicking it out of the united states so we're going to expect a lot more uh news articles and and just a lot more uh statements coming out when it comes to the ramping up of the whole sec enforcement on the crypto space so continuing on uh, the SEC again delays decision on Grayscale's B uh, Bitcoin ETF. The Securities and Exchange Commission is once again inviting the public to comment on whether a spot Bitcoin ETF presents a material risk to investors. So we've talked about this time and time again. We've we've been waiting for a Bitcoin ETF for years. So and, and it seems like they just keep kicking the can further down the road. You know, who knows? Grayscale may be the first one to actually get it. But like these delays, these denials... It's just happening time after time after time. So it's like, what like what are they looking for? Like, when is it going to be right in their eyes to have a Bitcoin ETF going? And quite honestly, if we do get a Bitcoin ETF, whether it's this year or next year, I mean, that could be a catalyst to really, you know, have an explosive price movement and, and growth and adoption within the space. Bring a lot more investors into the space. Could be massive. So I just wanted to highlight that. So SEC, again, delays the decision of Grayscale Bitcoin ETF. Continuing on here, uh, came across this tweet from uh, Zero Hedge. Pretty interesting. It's a, uh, an article from them. It says, uh, Bank of America says end game begins. Global rate shock has triggered tech wreck, tech wreck recession countdown, and systemic event. So uh, if you haven't checked out this article, go ahead and read this article. It's kind of food for thought, kind of see, you know, uh, how people how people are viewing what's going on within, you know, our economy and within our markets. Just kind of uh, a read to kind of get your brain going and kind of see you know, based on what we've been experiencing lately within our particular market and, you know, the articles and videos that's been going around, uh, just, a, just another take and another viewpoint. I just wanted to throw that up there. Uh, I forgot to like it here. Um, coming over here, Bitcoin returns to 40,000 liquidating over 50 million of shorts an hour. So this was yesterday and, uh, Blockworks had tweeted at the end of the day yesterday, it wasn't just uh, 50 million, it was 103 million. And as of today, it's been a lot more. So we're going to come down here and see, as you can see, there were so many shorts that got liquidated. And typically, it's usually the longs that, that's been getting liquidated lately, but the shorts been getting wrecked. Um, and that's, obviously, you see these wicks here. So it's like, okay, that that makes me a little weary. It's like, obviously, we've been in the you know extreme fear and fear, fear range for some time. So it was kind of easy to kind of set up you know some shorts. So my thing is now, like, where we're at right now, sitting at... Um, where were we at? Almost 42,000. Like, are they bull trapping us? Are they getting ready to liquidate some more longs? You know, are we going to hold strong? Just a big, you know, big question mark. For for me, it really doesn't matter. I mean, I accumulate hold and until I see an enticing price for me to start, you know, taking some profits. Other than that, I'm not a trader trading in and out of things. So it really doesn't matter. And I don't trade on leverage. But, you know, it does affect the markets. You know, if, if they're trying to bull trap people and liquidate longs, it's going to affect and suppress the prices of, of all our assets. And now on the other side, you know, as much as I don't like people getting wrecked, but it's it's nicer to see shorts, you know, people trying to short the market getting wrecked versus the longs. But anyways, that was a, a great article by um, Cointelegraph. It says a sudden death for those who were shorting Bitcoin or altcoins on February 4th. A major upside uh, level reappears after a two week absence. All right. Coming over here. So I told I just showed you that 103 million, but it was more than that. Uh, a little positive here it says Saudi Arabia will invest one billion in the metaverse. So we talked about obviously you have Facebook going to Meta and 
all these companies, Walmart, you know, Nike, just all these major corporations getting involved in the metaverse. Everything's been metaverse, 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 NFTs, um, you know, crypto gaming, all these things. The metaverse has been absolutely massive. So since to see this is just another positive. That's a lot of money. So metaverse plays are, are, are massive. And it's just a specific sector within the entire crypto ecosystem. So the crypto space has so much to offer. Uh, coming over here, and the last thing I wanted to cover is this. This is awesome. So, you know, for us Cardano investors, 3 million ADA wallets. So, absolutely, they just create, uh, just surpassed a milestone. So, they're past 3 million now. But I just wanted to throw this up here. You know, hats off to all the Cardano holders out there. The ecosystem has been growing. Uh, obviously, it's the price hasn't been as ideal as we'd like it to be. You know, we're waiting for, you know, the decks uh, to be solid and to be, you know, ran properly on the Cardano blockchain, you know, with uh, pan or not pancake swap, uh, Sunday swap. So who knows? Things are progressing. It may not be at the rate we like, but things are progressing. So I just kind of wanted to cover and give you my take on what's going on in the market right now. But with all that being said, just realize, hey, <laughs> we're early. One point nine eight trillion dollar market cap. Okay, we're, we're so early to the party. Stay strong out there. Be safe.